in a zone that humans don't survive in. Lockheed's Skunk Works team, led by the legendary Kelly Johnson, unveils a sleek black aircraft that looks like something pulled from a science fiction tale. It's the U-2, soon to earn the nickname Dragon Lady. With its lightweight structure and impossibly long wings, this aircraft is designed to fly where no other aircraft dares. 70,000 feet above the Earth, high enough to peer into the enemy's secrets without a trace. Under the hood, the U-2 is no ordinary machine. The US knows that satellites are years away and the stakes are getting higher with every step the Soviet Union takes. America's answer, an eye in the sky, capable of snapping high-resolution photographs from the edge of space. Pilots are hand-picked for these missions, trained rigorously to handle not just the pressure of flight, but the punishing conditions at such altitudes. These men are more than just pilots. They are silent sentinels, entrusted with gathering the intelligence that could change the course of history. The CIA steps in, cloaking the U-2 program in layers of secrecy. Missions are crafted with precision, each detail scrutinized. The cover story, weather reconnaissance. But as tensions spike, the true nature of these flights becomes clear to anyone watching. In the shadows of this new era, espionage and reconnaissance are a game of high stakes and deadly consequences. On a crisp day in May 1960, pilot Gary Powers takes off from a remote airfield, his U-2 climbing steadily into the heavens. His mission is simple yet perilous. Photograph critical Soviet military sites and bring the film home. The world seems distant from the tiny cockpit at 70,000 feet, where the horizon curves and the air thins. But Powers knows he's not alone up here. Soviet radars have been tracking these missions, each flight adding tension to the cold grip of the Cold War. The shriek of an SA-2 missile breaks through the thin air. Powers feels a shudder, the sudden unnatural lurch that confirms his deepest fear. The Dragon Lady, this marvel of technology, is vulnerable. Metal tears as the tail disintegrates and the aircraft spirals out of control. He ejects, parachuting into a storm of political chaos below. The Soviet Union parades him, proof of America's lies. The US, forced to admit the truth, watches its carefully constructed cover story collapse. A spy plane incident on the eve of the summit was seized upon by the Kremlin and blown up to proportions that startled and shocked the outside world. Khrushchev himself at the Moscow press conference loosed a furious tirade, charging America with deliberate aggression and threatening to attack any Allied bases from which U-2 jets flew over Russia. The myth of invincibility shatters, but the missions don't stop. The intelligence is too vital, the risk too acceptable when measured against what's at stake. The US, scarred by the powers incident, seeks a quieter approach. A plan takes shape, a partnership with Taiwan, known then as the Republic of China. Washington and Taipei share a common interest, understanding the capabilities of the growing communist power on the mainland. The island's strategic position makes it the perfect launch pad for new U-2 missions. Under a veil of secrecy, Taiwan forms the 35th Squadron, nicknamed the Black Cats. The name is fitting, silent, swift, masters of the night. Pilots train under rigorous conditions, facing the suffocating isolation of high-altitude flight. Among the first is Mike Hua, a young pilot standing before the U-2 at Taoyuan Air Base. The aircraft, painted with the Republic of China insignia, looks almost otherworldly. It's hard to believe this bird, with its delicate frame and massive wings, can climb to the edge of space. Training is brutal. The altitude presses the pilots to their limits, every mission testing their endurance. As the first flights take off into the unknown, they capture intelligence that exceeds expectations. Photographs unveil more than landscapes. They reveal military sites, radar installations, and evidence of a nuclear program that seems years ahead of schedule. The images are maps of power and vulnerability, bringing Washington and Taipei insight into a rapidly changing military landscape. The Black Cats learn quickly that their greatest asset, their height, does not make them untouchable. September 9, 1962, a U-2 mission over Nanchang marks a turning point. Chinese radars lock on and an SA-2 missile thunders skyward. The pilot, highly trained, maneuvers to evade, but at such altitudes, the slightest mistake is fatal. The missile strikes true, 
and the Dragon Lady tumbles out of the sky, breaking apart as it falls. On the ground, Chinese forces rush to secure the wreckage. For the Black Cats, it's the first blood drawn in a battle that is anything but straightforward. In the ensuing years, the cat and mouse game evolves. The People's Liberation Army adapts, learning to anticipate the flights, move missile batteries, and disguise radar stations. Each mission becomes more dangerous than the last. Another U-2, in November 1963, is lost over Wuhan during a mission targeting suspected nuclear sites. A major, codenamed Robin, piloted a U-2 on a search for possible nuclear installations in Wuhan. In the Hubei province, SA-2 missiles downed his aircraft near the Jiangxi province town of Yintan, and he was later detained. The pilot is captured and becomes a pawn in a geopolitical chess game. He is released only after negotiations, slipping quietly into obscurity after being moved to the US and then allowed to return to Taiwan decades later. His fate, together with another downed U-2 pilot, was secured. The missions push deeper. July 1964 sees another U-2 downed, this time over Fujian province, as it departs from QB Point in the Philippines. The pilot's last moments are marked by a failed ejection. His death underscores the thin line between gathering intelligence and becoming a headline. By 1965, the U-2s are probing deeper still, mapping out nuclear sites and military routes. The pilots know their luck will eventually run out. January 10, 1965, a mission ends in a flash of light as an SA-2 missile finds its mark. The pilot survives but is captured, another silent sacrifice for the intelligence war. Not every story has a clear ending. One U-2, lost during a night mission over Hebei province, simply vanishes. Control failure sends it spiraling into the Yellow Sea. Weeks of searches yield nothing but silence. The sea keeps its secrets. The U-2 story doesn't end when Taiwan returns its aircraft. The Black Cat's legacy continues as a testament to Cold War bravery. The US Air Force still flies the U-2, upgraded but familiar, its silhouette a reminder of high-altitude espionage. In 2023, a U-2 pilot snaps a high-altitude selfie with a Chinese spy balloon, the image sparking a flurry of interest. The Dragon Lady, once a secret, now straddles the line between relic and active legend. The US Air Force plans to retire the U-2 fleet by 2026, marking the end of an era. For nearly seven decades, the U-2 has quietly kept tabs on adversaries, provided valuable data on crises, and paced threats to America and her allies.